What if you're in the normal range for glucose in terms of your fasting blood sugar and your A1C, but your glucose is spiking every time you eat a high-carb meal? Are you in any trouble? According to recent studies, the answer is yep, you sure are. Recently, someone left a link under one of my videos to a documentary produced by the public broadcasting organization in Japan. The original video was titled Glucose Spike, Uncovering a Hidden Threat. In this video, the theme is that glucose spikes, all by themselves, even with a blood sugar at a normal level, can be terribly damaging to our health. Now, I'll have to admit I'm not totally comfortable with everything they say in this video and the way they act as though glucose spikes are entirely separate from diabetes, but their main point is powerful, which is that glucose spikes are not natural, they're not benign, and they are a warning of danger ahead. In the opening of the documentary, Professor Antonio Seriello states, medicine has ignored the harmful effects of the glucose spike for a long time, but it undermines our health even as we are unaware of it. Well, I want to highlight those words, even as we are unaware of it. Now, many of you are keenly aware of your glucose spikes in your body after high-carb meals, and you know this because you've tested your blood sugar before and after eating, just the way I have. In fact, it was this knowledge that led me to find the key to beating diabetes in my own life. I've seen Mike, my little blood sugar meter, reveal to me again and again what happens to my glucose when I eat potatoes, rice, cake, candy bars, or drink fruit juice or sodas. But guess what? Most people never test their glucose and never think about their glucose at all. They depend on a once or twice a year medical checkup where their fasting glucose is tested or their A1C is tested. When the doc says to them they're not diabetic, well, they're completely satisfied. They would no sooner test their glucose levels after a meal than they would pick a fight with a bear or try to row across the ocean in a canoe. It's just not their mentality. And this means that if you ask the average person, does your glucose tend to spike very high after you eat a high-carb meal? Well, they'll look at you with a puzzled expression as though you are speaking in a foreign language. But knowing whether your glucose spikes after eating is incredibly valuable. And if it does indeed spike, you're headed for trouble, even if your doctor assures you you are not diabetic. The narrator states, Glucose spikes are found even in people who are known to be healthy in ordinary medical examinations. They share an experiment done in a business where they asked volunteers to eat a meal. They'd be tested before eating and then two hours after eating. And everyone was given two rice balls and a drink combination of vegetable juice and fruit juice. The participants all had normal fasting glucose levels, no diabetics. Nearly all were young, and I couldn't really see any old people there, you know, people like me. The determination of what is a glucose spike was a glucose reading of over 140 milligrams per deciliter two hours after eating. And of the 65 people in one, this one business, all of whom had normal fasting blood sugar, 20 were found to have glucose spikes. One young man in his 20s jumped all the way from 97 up to 233. In this documentary, they ask the question, why is it so difficult to detect spikes in regular medical examination and tests? And then they answer their own question, because the blood is checked when the person has not eaten anything, and with an empty stomach, their glucose looks like everybody else's. And this is the case for many future diabetics. Most of you diabetics who watch this channel were in this state years before your doctor diagnosed you. Your fasting glucose was decent, your A1C was okay, but you were spiking at almost every meal. But the point is not just that a lot of people have glucose spikes and these may eventually lead to diabetes. It's worse than that, as bad as that is. 
The point this documentary makes is that you're already doing serious damage to your body right now. Forget about the diabetes you're going to get 10 years down the road today while your glucose soars high and then plunges low after your meal of spaghetti, French bread, and a dessert. You're doing serious harm to yourself. Tests were carried out at a hospital which revealed the unexpected relationship between glucose spikes and heart attacks. Half the patients who had heart failures of some kind had had glucose spikes, and over one fourth more had diabetes. So, blood sugar issues made up three quarters of the patients who had heart attacks. And as they looked into this, they found that people who had regular glucose spikes had narrow, hardened arteries and blockages. Dr. Masafumi Kitakazi from the National Cerebral and Cardiovascular Center said this, I was really surprised. I think this was the world's first time this was revealed, referring to the relationship between high glucose and heart disease. They shared research in this documentary from Italy where cells from interior walls of blood vessels were soaked in liquids with a lot of glucose and then, alternatively, they were soaked in solutions with a small amount of glucose, trying to create the condition of glucose levels that are skyrocketing high and then falling low. A potentially harmful substance called reactive oxygen was produced in large quantities in these cells. Two weeks later, 42% of the cells died because of this reactive oxygen. They stated, when glucose levels rise sharply, reactive oxygen is produced in large quantities in cells. This substance damages the cells. Then when the cells try to repair themselves, immune cells are attached to the artery walls and are absorbed into them. The artery walls swell and become narrow in those places. That's how the arteries become hardened. The narrator went on to say, whenever we have a glucose spike, the hardening of our arteries occurs little by little. You might say it this way, we harden our arteries and destroy our heart one meal at a time, one spike at a time. Dr. Masafumi Kitakazi also stated, a glucose spike is not a precursor of diabetes. A glucose spike itself can be called a disease. It damages the heart. It damages the blood vessels. It is causing cardiovascular disease. Now, I'll have to say I disagree with the idea that regular glucose spikes are not a precursor of diabetes. I believe that glucose spikes are probably the very best indicator of diabetes that's ahead. But I do agree with his main point that glucose spikes all by themselves, perhaps a decade or more before you're diagnosed with diabetes, are already doing you significant harm. And I have no doubt that in some cases people die from a heart attack or a stroke before diabetes ever shows up on their medical record. They were experiencing major glucose soaring and plunging, soaring and plunging but their A1C was below 6.5 and they were never called a diabetic. This documentary states that people with glucose spikes are 1.9 times more likely to have a heart attack than non-spiking people. They're 1.6 times more likely to get dementia and they're 1.5 times more likely to get cancer. And of course, I would add that they're extremely likely to become fully diabetic at some point in their future if they don't die of a heart attack or a stroke first. Now, let me clarify something that they leave out. There is a term they don't seem to use in this documentary, which is strange, but they never use the term insulin resistance. But what they're describing as glucose spikes is really insulin resistance, or it's produced by insulin resistance. And behind much of the heart disease and the high blood pressure and the dementia and cancer, is insulin resistance. And guess what? Insulin resistance can be killing you and damaging you long before your doctor looks at you sadly and says, you have diabetes. And if you do have insulin resistance, you can bet the farm you're having glucose spikes after nearly every meal. You're bouncing well beyond 140 and probably hitting close to over 200 milligrams about an hour or an hour and a half after eating any meal that has significant carbs in it. 
They used a glucose tolerance test to determine if these people had the disease of what they called glucose spikes, but there is a lot cheaper way to do that. Eat a high-carb meal, say several pieces of deep-dish pizza, and swallow it down with a large regular soda. Test your glucose about an hour later and see if your blood sugar has surged well past 140. And if so, you're probably looking at insulin resistance. Of course, you can go to your doctor and get an official glucose tolerance test, but the official test and that pizza and soda test are not all that different. One important point they make in this video is... It would be a great mistake to believe that glucose spikes are only a problem for middle-aged people who are obese. They shared some tests they did with four slender young ladies in their 20s. They were given a glucose tolerance test. Before the test, one said, well, since I'm slender and young, there should be no problem. She spiked to 156 two hours after the sweetened drink and was shocked. Another spiked to 190. And they stated in this video, researchers found that 24% of slender women in their 20s have glucose spikes. Amazing. They suggest that a major reason for this has to do with their muscle mass. Muscle cells absorb a great deal of sugar in the bloodstream. But excessive dieting or lack of exercise greatly decreases muscle mass. With nowhere to go, the glucose builds up in the bloodstream, making glucose spikes easier to occur. Flabby bodies with little muscle mass are simply not efficient at processing glucose. This is why weightlifting, push-ups, and so forth may be more effective than jogging and walking in beating diabetes. One Japanese lady talking about how the children of Japan are now experiencing elevated glucose levels said, it's worrisome, since our diet has changed, that kind of thing can happen. Now that's worth repeating. Since our diet has changed, that kind of a thing can happen. Elevated glucose levels even in the children. And it's not just Japan. It's the United States, it's India, it's Australia, Britain, Africa, Pakistan. It's virtually everywhere. Dr. Michael Snyder of Stanford University conducted a little study in which 30 people switched between three breakfasts, a bowl of cornflakes with milk, a peanut butter sandwich, and a protein bar. After the test, they found out that more than half of the group who had shown normal blood sugar on fasting glucose tests spiked just as high as those of people who were diabetic or pre-diabetic. And nearly everybody spiked after eating the cereal, the cornflakes. Snyder reported, we saw that 80% of our participants spiked after eating a bowl of cornflakes and milk. Make of that what you will, but my own personal belief is it's probably not such a great thing for everyone to be eating. He sounded surprised, but that doesn't surprise me at all. There is one implication of all this that I have to mention. The people who are eating a whole food, plant-based, high-carb diet are typically seeing glucose spikes all the time, or at least they would be seeing them if they tested themselves. And often they will admit that their blood sugar does spike, but they suggest that doesn't really matter because after two or three hours, their blood sugar has returned to normal. In many cases, their dietary gurus discourage them from even testing for glucose peaks since they know it doesn't really help their cause. Since their A1C is looking pretty good, these spikes don't mean anything. This documentary and a lot of other research says they are dead wrong. Even if their A1C is decent, by spiking their glucose at every meal, they are seriously harming themselves. It may not show up for some years, but bouncing your glucose up and down, up and down, up and down at every meal and every day is a recipe for disaster. As I mentioned, there are some things in this documentary I didn't especially like. They showed that after skipping breakfast, your lunch meal will tend to spike higher than ordinary. And if you skip breakfast and lunch, then your dinner meal will spike higher still. And so they recommend eating three meals a day and never skipping any meal. I would say their data may be correct, but their conclusions are faulty. I can skip breakfast and still keep from a glucose spike at lunch very easily. How do I do that? I simply eat very few carbs for lunch. Or if I do a 36-hour fast and skip an entire day, 
Once I start to eat, I can still avoid a spike simply by eating a meal with almost no carbs. But I would agree that this research is a warning to those who are practicing OMAD and when they finally get around to eating their one meal of the day, they pig out on high-carb foods feeling like they're rewarding themselves for being a good boy or a good girl and eating only once a day. Another thing I did not agree with was how they waffled and un underemphasized the low-carb diet. They seem to agree that a low-carb diet is going to cure your glucose spikes. Now, how could anyone not see that? But still, they suggest that a low-carb diet might be unsustainable, it wouldn't be necessary for everybody, yada, yada, yada. Well, I'm not bashful or afraid to tell it like it is. I'm convinced that our world is gorging themselves, stuffing themselves, wolfing down huge amounts of unhealthy, unnatural, diabetes-promoting, glucose-spiking, high-insulin-promoting carbohydrates, and that only a radical reduction of carbs will get you to a diet that is health-promoting and can produce conditions in your body where diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, cancer, and dementia are less likely to appear. They do show one encouraging little experiment done on a mouse in this documentary. They took a diabetic mouse and tested his pancreas, which showed he was producing little insulin. Then they gave him some medication daily to lower his glucose. After two months, they took another look at his tiny pancreas, and they found that he was looking 100% better in producing insulin in a normal fashion. They concluded that at least sometimes when you give your pancreas a rest, let me say it again, your pancreas a rest, those beta cells can somehow spring back to life again. Professor Mika Imazumi felt that this could work the same way in humans who stopped overloading their worn-out pancreases with eating too many carbs, he concluded if glucose levels are lowered through an improvement in lifestyle habits, the secretion of insulin can be recovered. A healthy condition can be restored. An improvement in lifestyle habits. Amen to that. At the end of the documentary, they make a couple of statements that I strongly agree with, saying modern science has finally caught up with this demon speaking about glucose spikes that causes heart attacks, cancer, diabetes, and even dementia, we hold the key in our hands right now to significantly lengthen our healthy lives. And that, of course, is what I've been saying to you in all these Beat Diabetes videos coming out every Tuesday and Friday. Victory over diabetes for you is not far off. It's not light years away. You have it in your hands right now by the grace of God to stave off this monster who's attacked you to get your glucose levels close to the normal range and to, as our channel name declares, beat diabetes. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.